well, this is a bit of an out-of-body experience. And uh, I look over here at my old pal, Gino Conte, and think back on the days when Gino and I covered city council and the aforementioned and much blonder John Nilsson at the time. And uh, never in my wildest dreams that I thought I'd be standing here in front of you 20-some uh, odd years later uh, describing or commenting on one of the most exciting developments uh, I can recall in the downtown. So uh, the journalist side of me says, um, great to see so many people downtown, where have you been? And the publisher side of me says, welcome, and we're looking forward to seeing you again early and often. So um, very excited about this, and I, when I think about it, you know, I've been a, I've been a, uh, a downtown working resident, or at least it's been my working home for more than 30 years. Uh, the Windsor Stars' own uh, history in, the, in this community in the downtown goes back more than a century. Uh, I would be hard pressed to find anything else that's as much of an institution in the downtown as the Windsor Star. And I wonder today what a fellow named uh, Archie McNee would have thought had he still been around and contemplated this. Archie McNee is the individual who in 1890 purchased a little paper called the Windsor Record, which was a weekly at the time, and turned it into a daily publication. We were then headquartered at the corner of Ferry Street and Riverside Drive. Uh, that's when it all got started. Uh, the Herman family purchased the franchise in 1918, renamed it the Border City Star. Uh, the paper went through a number of transformations. We moved on to Ferry Street in 1923, what was uh, then called the Star Annex. We called it the Little Apartment Building. It's the building in the farthest south that now holds, uh, hosts our mural. Uh, in 1927, we moved into our new headquarters right at the corner of Pitt and Ferry Street, and essentially we have been there ever since, uh, operating uninterrupted and enjoying a great, uh, great run in the downtown. Uh, it's been a place of tremendous activity and a hub of activity for the community. Over the years, people would gather at the Star on election night to listen to results, and results pouring in for the election, and we've hosted many uh, community leaders, captains of industry, prime ministers, premiers, mayors, had our editorial meetings, editorial board meetings. Uh, we've, we've had a great time covering the downtown, and, uh, and here we are today, uh, all these years later, uh, taking part in history as opposed to just writing about it. And I think there's something special about that, and I congratulate all the partners who were involved in today's uh, decision. As much as I hate to say so, I have to actually congratulate politicians. So Dwight, Sandra, Eddie, <laughs> terrific work, uh, Dr. Wildeman, uh, I also saw John Strasser in the, in the audience, and John, uh, every time I look at your Mediaplex, I, I look at it with envy because you've done a fabulous job uh, putting that together, and you really put the flag in the ground in the downtown. Uh, so I look forward to this being uh, you know, the start of the next great chapter. In my view, it's just a start, though. And as I think I have the right to say, as a person who's been in business and operated in the downtown for more than 30 years, this is just a start, and we need to do more for our downtown. We need people living here, we need people coming back here on a regular basis, socializing here, coming and enjoying the waterfront. So I hope all of this is a catalyst toward that. Um, obviously, the star, should this proceed and should a, a deal be arranged for us to turn over the keys to the, uh, to the building, to the university, we'll be making a strong commitment, I hope, to the downtown. This is what our intention is, and this is where we belong. So thank you very much.